my name is Ryan Fonette. I'm the senior consultant here at CCG. Um, and just uh, here's some uh, info for contact info right here. Okay. So like I said, I'm a senior consultant at uh, CCG. I've been with the company for about a year and two months now. I have more than 11 years professional experience with dealing with different programming languages, tools, methodologies, mm -hmm. frameworks, uh, covering uh, various industries. Objectives. So what are we here to talk about today? First, we're going to find what is customer churn. Okay, we're going to go to definition and do a little example just so you guys can figure out what that is, right? Uh, next, we're going to talk about how customer churn affects our bottom line, right? Uh, next, we're going to talk about some, some of the factors that are going to affect customer churn. And then after that, we're going to get into a little demo using uh, Azure Machine Learning, um, followed by some methods on how we want to prevent or how we can prevent customer churn. Um, and the last we will uh, wrap up with some reference and some Q&A. <clears throat> so I'm going to read this definition off so I don't listen up. But customer churn is the turnover of customers that is experienced during a given period of time. So let me give you an example. We all have customers here, right? That's how we stay in business, right? Revenue. Um, so we start at the beginning of the month with 1,000 customers. 1,000 customers and then we project about 100 or so are going to leave us any time, right? During that period of time. Um, for various reasons. Uh, maybe they're moving to another area of the country, or we no longer you know, provide that service to them, or maybe you know, they you know, run into one of our salespeople and they you know, get disgruntled and butt heads and they're leaving for the competitors, or maybe it's just you know, on and on. So there's various reasons. So, um, so what we can uh, look at based on customer churn is a very important metric called churn rate. And this example that I just talked about, uh, it's monthly churn rate. So what does the formula look like? Well, it's very simple. This isn't going to hurt anyone's head, hopefully. Um, where it's the customers who left, divide by the beginning of the month, BOM, customers, and multiply that by 100, right, to get a percent. So for my example, I said there's going to be 100 customers we were projecting that are going to leave. And we had to start out with 1,000 customers times 100. Well, that gives us 10%. That would be our customer churn rate. So why is that important? Why, why is this important? Well, customer churn, you know, it's going to affect our bottom line. And for those who don't know what the uh, equation is for the profit, it's revenue minus costs. Pretty simple. Um, and it may be pretty straightforward after I just gave you that definition of what uh, actually how this is going to affect revenue, right? So we're losing our customers to competitors, and you know, revenue is revenue is going to go down, right? And so what about costs? This may not be as intuitive, of course, if you look at my little picture, which I'll talk, to, to talk about in a second here, uh, you may kind of try to figure it out. Well, for those who don't know, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to attract new customers, right? As opposed to um, retaining the existing ones that we have. So all your sales folks and all your directing folks and advertising promotions, think about the social media, think of the web advertising, the cold calls, all that sort of thing, it just takes so much time and money to get those customers. And then this, for this example, uh, you know, we're going to treat it as a customer bucket. So once we have them all there, we don't want to lose them. All right? But we are going to lose them, as you can see right here. There's some holes in our bucket, unfortunately. But we want to try to plug in as many holes as we can, or else there goes our revenue, right? there goes our money. And pretty soon, if we're not able to be proactive about it, we're losing customers, and then we have an empty bucket, and then they're going to lose us. Right? So customer churn is very important. Uh, and yes, and so this kind of just proves uh, the inverse relationship here. All right, so factors that affect customer churn. Well, customer satisfaction, right? So customer satisfaction, uh, you know, you have an expectation when you go into a place, you expect to be treated a certain way, get you know, specific um, service to be done or product, whatever it is. But uh, really, if we are able to be satisfied, little chance that we're actually going to, you know, potentially leave, even in a bad situation, right? So for example, I go to uh, some bar down the street that I've been going to, you know, for whatever, 10 years, and then I order, you know, some chicken wings, and they're just a little pink, you know, <laughs> hey, can you take my chicken wings back? <laughs> oh, sorry, no, we don't do any refunds, you know, you're screwed. Oh, okay, well, I'm just going to take my business go this way. I'm not satisfied here. I got so many options, why would I, right? So. Uh, customer satisfaction is key, um, and customer delight. So what is that? It's kind of kind of like customer satisfaction, except 
it's even taking an extra mile, right? So in that example where the chicken you know, you know, takes so well, oh, I'm sorry, sir, here's you know, $100 gift certificate. Please come see us as much as you want for the month, or that sort of thing. And when I think of customer, or when I think of companies that kind of really exemplify customer delight and do a good job of that, I think of companies like Disney. I think of companies like Southwest Airlines. I think of uh, Chick Fil A and the fast food industry. Those types of companies, right, that really are good at creating this customer delight. Uh, another reason, another factor is switching costs. So if it costs a lot to switch to our competitors, we're more inclined not to leave, right? So, um, and I, I'd like to even kind of add to this, not only switching costs, but just the time it takes to switch. So, for example, I think of, I get my monthly bill from uh, my cable, my cable company, right? And they just jack up a price of a dollar two. Oh my gosh, I'm so mad. I can go over <laughs> to my competitor and, you know, direct TV or whatever. But then I start thinking about it. Well, oh gosh, you know, I want to cancel this. And that's the service fee. And then I'm going to have to sign up for a new contract. I'm going to have to pay, you know, whatever for an installation fee, if, you know, and then I'm gonna have to get one of those eight hour windows and you know, that never, you know, <laughs> it takes forever for them to come out. So I got all these reasons why I might not, you know, I'm just gonna suck it up and, you know, kind of stick with my, uh, my uh, business. And then value, right? So if we're not providing value, uh, if, then you know, there's no point. I like to say I've had so many options. So uh, value is an important one there as well. So, Predicting customer churn uh, using AML. So I'm going to jump into a de demo, and I'm kind of there. We go. All right, cool. I'll find part of the demo. Right. Um, so uh, what I'm what I'm about to show you is all free, and it's called Studio Azure ML .net. So let me zoom in for you guys. Let me put on. Hopefully, you can see that right there. So. Um, it's free website. You don't need a Jira subscription at all. You don't need a you know credit card or anything. It's just you, you actually get tons of tons of storage. I think it's up to ten gigs to upload your own data sets, to play around with. Um, but it's a great tool, and it's a uh, it's a nice if you're you know custom to Azure, you're going to be accustomed to this kind of interface and the look and feel, I believe. And then those who are into ETL SSIS, I think, kind of drag and drop. So it's very GUI driven. So what this is going to do to oper operationalize how we are going to create um, some what's called experiments and kind of do some predictive analytics stuff. Um, so I don't have too much time to get in all, all what all these components are, but what I will say is experiments are where you're going to be creating solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one. And uh, as you can see, here's my interface, here's, here's my, my tools that I can drag and drop onto my interface, okay, onto the canvas here. Um, a little template on what that looks like. Um, so right, you start for a data set, just like any kind of ETL or analytic solution, that's what we're doing here. Um, and to the left, uh, we have all our types of um, groupings of all our components. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna drag and drop a data set that I actually uploaded. Um, Happy name customer churn data. So let me zoom in here. Um, so what this is is a CSV file that's going to contain some telecommunication data, uh, which is going to kind of show you kind of like your plans, right? Your plan. So you know the, the number that's on the plan, the actual minutes uh, that you're using per month or um, per day, um, and your nightly charge and international charges, that sort of data. So. Instead of me talking about it, let me actually show you. So right away, we can right click on this little uh, one uh, button here and click on visualize. And let's see, can you guys see that in the back? Hopefully pretty well. Let's see if I can. Over here. But you can see right here, it kind of gives us some uh, statistics right here on the amount of rows, amount of columns, and then all, and then give us some sample data here. Um, so X database is like an identity column. We have our state account link, area code, phone, uh, like I said, international plan. And what I'm going to do is scroll over to the right. Um, again, I'll zoom in here a second. But all these variables um, and are independent. What are called independent variables. So these are variables that we're going to use to predict our outcome. And our outcome is churn. What customers are we losing? What customers are we not losing? And if we click on any of the columns, but I'm going to click on this one called churn, and 
again, I'll try to zoom in for you guys in the back. But you can see we have, it kind of gives us some, it kind of helps us with some data profiling right off the bat. So we know that there's two unique values. It's a binary feature, it's true or false. And then a really cool thing is if you scroll down the bottom here, and I might have to zoom out because I'm not able to, is it, it creates a histogram. And in the histogram, it gives us a percentage of the amount of data elements that are false, which is 86%. So if you do the math, you know 14% is true. So right now, we're only losing 14%, which is yeah, it's not too bad, but we want to be proactive, right? We don't want to get you know, to the 20% and those kind of thresholds. So that's where, uh, that's what our data set looks like. And now what I'm going to do now, is since that was a lot of comps, and in a data science project, you would go through this process called feature selection. So you're looking at correlation between your independent and dependent variables, multicollinearity, I can never say that word, where the variables for the independent variables are you know, similar, so you want to disregard those. But there's this whole process that I don't have time for this demo to go over. So you just have to trust me that I'm going to say these variables we don't need. <coughs> So in order to do that, there is a component, and again, see how I'm typing this window, because I don't want to have to sift through all these tons and tons of uh, components called select columns and data set. And then drag and drop and connect. And you can see we have a little exclamation point, and usually that means, hey, we need to uh, set this up. So within here, we're going to lock, launch the column selector, and this allows us to select the columns that we A, want to keep within our data flow, or ones that we want to exclude. So since there are a lot of ones I want to include, I'm going to exclude columns. So I click on with rules, and I'm going to hit the exclude. And here I got some IntelliSense helping me out on the columns. So obviously, this one, I don't want database seed ID, I want the area code phone number, and then all the different types of charges for the day, uh, let's see, eve, I believe, yep, night, <clears throat> and international, should be the last one. Alright, so make sure you always click this OK button, I just get excited and just click off it, that, we'll see that. Okay, so now we have this, I'm going to zoom back out, so you guys can kind of see this flow a little bit better. And now what I can do at any point in the time, just kind of like an ETL package or whatever, right, is I can run this. So I'm going to run this job just to kind of show you. So that was pretty quick. It's not that many columns. And again, I can right click on this and I can visualize. I can save this as a data set. Um, and I can, you can already see that I've you know, excluded some of those columns. So. That's kind of the data purging part that I'm going to show. Now, in, uh, in this model, we're going to have to do two things. We need to create what's called training and test data sets. What that means is we want to be able to take a percentage of our data and send it down this way for it to train, and then we're going to send another part of this data, and that's what we're going to use to test. And what are we doing? We're going to be training that data on a specific statistical model that we're going to choose and ensure that it is, um, is trained and it meets our, our criteria. And then we're going to use the test data set to come down and ensure that uh, the trained model is something that actually looks good as far as accuracy and that sort of thing. Uh, real high level on that, but I, I'll, I'll get into it more. But let's look at what's called, uh, we can easily do this called the split function. So we just carry this over here. And you can see I'm going to zoom in right here. Uh, we have some options here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I like to put, I don't know, at least 70 to 80 percent of the data I'd like to flow through my training set. That way I can get a good base to see how well my model is going to be able to spread its uh, churn. So I'm going to put 80 percent. And then the random seed, this will make sure that if I run this continuously, that I will get consistent results. And that's kind of all I had to do there. So, like I said, 80% is going to flow this way. This will be the training, and 20% will be the test data set. And now I'm going to choose my statistical model, which in this case I'm going to use what's called a decision jungle. Again, there's you guys are familiar with you know some of the statistical models. You have tree, you have for regression classification, you have logistic regression, you have uh, decision trees, forest jungles. 
all those sorts of things. And this is one that I know is going to work well. Again, this is another part of the process that takes a lot of time to get to get to. But just trust me that this is going to work well. Okay. Um, so that was our model. That so, and if we wanted to, and and then like another typical experiment is I would I would want to train a lot of these models. All right. I want to see how well a logistic regression is going to compare against a, a jungle or a regression tree or randomized flow, those sort of stuff. So I would be training, and you can do that by by carrying this data set and just kind of splitting all over the place. Um, but that's how it's good for this. Um, and then, so next I want to train the model. So I'm going to pull up the train model. Okay. And and again, and it, it, see, it kind of helps you. It tells you, okay, yep, you need to put your system model here, and then bring your train set down here. And all right, so we're good. And see again, we're my low explanation point. Here, I need to tell the model, well, what are we, what are we looking at training? Yeah, well, we're going to look at using those independent variables to predict churn um, based on that system model that I chose. Um, Lastly, well, two more steps. When you want to score the model, so again, and really it's not too much configuration at this point. Um, I could have configured also the uh, decision jungle. There's parameters there, but I left all those. And I'm going to now that my model is trained, I'm going to now see how it how it compares to my test data set. So I'm going to drag my test data set. That point percent of data, and lastly, the last step is evaluating the model. Right, we're going to see how well this model performs best, or based on this on this data set. Okay, so that's pretty much what a typical model looks like. And I'll zoom in here so you guys can kind of see. So we start out with our our source data, do a little data munching. Obviously, you know, I had a pretty clean data set. We saw there wasn't anything wrong with our Turn or some of our other un, un, um, independent variables, but you can you can tell that that usually is about 70 80 percent of the data science product or process is just kind of the data munching, right? Um, and then the 20 percent, like I said, is the feature selection and then the uh, statistical model selection as well. Um, so it's not a not a very easy task. I just you know, came with this very quickly. So. Now that we have it here, but you can see how easy this was with very little knowledge of statistics. I mean, um, at least to get this part moving and then you come into the piece of And if you ever did need help on any of these components, you can just click on this component and you can reach more help and it's going to give you a wealth of knowledge on that particular item. So without further ado, let's run this. Great, and again, like at any point in time, I can always visualize uh, the data, or I can, for, th for this, if I want to save this as a train model for other experiments, I could do that as well. Um, but I'm going to look at the last two here, the score model, see how well we did. So you can see, here's our scored labels that came from our uh, train model, model, and here's the actual event. So uh, it looks like we fared pretty well. Um, anything. Uh, below 0.5, we're going to predict as false. Anything above it is true. And as you can see, we did a pretty good job just looking at the top couple of components on what our training model said was going to be churn and what our test uh, model, our test data is. So, looks pretty good so far. Lastly, we're going to look at how well we did uh, using the value weight model. And, uh, Again, this is what's called the ROC curve. So this is going to look at a true positive rate, false positive rate. Now, if we were at exactly 100%, the curve would go all the way to the top and go all the way over. But this looks pretty good. Um, I think it's in the 90 percentile. So 92.8 is our AC curve. And you can see our true positives is actually what we predicted was going to be true. And then our true negative is 800. Uh, so here, you know, confusion matrix. Um, so the, all that looks pretty good in the accuracy. So this is a model that I would be happy with in order to deploy and you know test with other sample data sets. Okay, 
So, I'm going to get back into my presentation. I think I have two more slides. Oh, that's wrong. That's not a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's more questions on that. Like I said, I kind of try to, only 20 minutes, I had to go through it pretty quickly, but I just, the point is, here's custom return, right? It's something that's important, so that's something we might want to predict, and here's a tool that we can use to predict it, right? And one of the things uh, I guess I should talk about, so what, you know, I can use R, I can use other things to do that. The cool thing about uh, AML is you can actually create um, a web service out of it. You can deploy a web service, and then you can hit that via R or C Sharp, whatever, and it's very easy once you do that. It even has like the, the code for you to hit um, using the different languages. So it supplies that for you in the, the actual uh, Studio. So let's see. All right. That's so what we're uh, lastly, I just want to touch upon. Uh, you know, how can we prevent customer churn? And I, I've come up with, or I found 15 reasons. I kind of highlighted five that I thought were, I guess, more important than some of the other ones. But again, set me customer expectation. We kind of talked about that with customer service, right? Always be adding value. Another kind of topic we talked about in our factors. Build that sticky customer loyalty. You know, we want to make sure that they're always coming back to us for one reason or the other. Listen to your customers. Right, that's important in any kind of relationship. <laughs> you know, especially uh, keep your eyes open for those external environment changes. You know, there's always disruptors and technology and whatnot. We always have to be aware of what our competitors are doing. Um, so if we do that, maybe we can mitigate our customer share. With that, I have some references. Um, pretty much, this is kind of all the, the first couple slides and the information I got, and those are the tactics I just went over. The General Mel Studio, like I said, it's free. And then uh, Cortana Gallery for AML Experiments. So there's tons of stuff. You can go out to, uh, and I can go real quick to that um, studio, the GeraMel.net site. You got studio, yeah, okay. Um, so if you scroll up here, there's a quick tour, but um, I got the bottom. Actually, I'll just go back here. If you click, gosh, I must have taken off that one page. But here, here, anyways, this is a bunch of experiments that people have created based on different industries, based on different use cases. I believe customer churn is out there. It's a little different from mine, so I didn't come to it. But it is out there, and there's fraud detection, AML, all kinds of stuff uh, for you guys to get started. Um, anyways, a lot of information, very quick. That's all I have for 20 minutes. Um, any questions?